The placenta is a large organ that develops during pregnancy and is attached to the wall of the uterus. The placental barrier is an important anatomical and immune barrier specifically designed to protect against bacterial invaders. It's an important part of the reason that despite some conflicting research in the last decade, why we now regard the gut or the fetus as sterile, that is, free from any bacteria. There has been quite a bit of research done into the genetic information of the microbes, that is microbiome, in a newborn. The newborn's gut microbiome immediately after birth is heavily dependent on the mode of delivery. We know that vaginally born infants harbor an early microbiome resembling that of the vagina, with the predominance of Lactobacillus, Prevotella, and Snethia species. On the other hand, skin commensal organisms such as Staphylococcus, Carinibacterium, and Propanibacterium seem to dominate the gut microbiome of infants born via cesarean section. Very early on in the newborn's life, we find that there are a lot of oxygen-dependent bacteria, also known as aerobes, that colonize the gut, consume oxygen, and pave the way for bacteria that don't require oxygen for growth, also known as anaerobic bacteria. Breastfeeding is a major source of bifidobacteria to the newborn infant. Breast milk contains some special carbohydrates that encourages the growth of bifidobacteria. Bifidobacteria becomes a dominant bacterial group in the newborn and continues until weaning off breast milk. Interestingly, bifidobacteria is commonly found in many commercial probiotics. The weaning off breast milk, along with the introduction of solid foods, results in a very marked shift in the composition of the infant's gut microbiota. We see a rise in Bacteroides, Clostridia, and Streptococcus species, whilst the levels of Bifidobacteria and Lactobacillus fall. Eventually, by the end of the first 1,000 days of life, we find that the gut microbiome in the toddler becomes much more stable and adult-like. There are still, of course, changes in the gut microbiome during adolescence and throughout adult life, but the major changes sculpting the gut microbiome have occurred by the end of the first 1,000 days of life. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do so as I'll be uploading new content about the gut for you soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.